Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So hey, appreciate everybody that has subscribed. Really appreciate it. If you guys like these videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, shoot me some comments, I will get back with you. So we are working on the Pink Dodge Challenger. Uh, I had a comment a while back. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I'd have to look back and see who it was. Um, they asked me if I ever wet sand or polish my models. And the answer to that is typically no. Um, not that I'm saying mine come out like perfect, because they don't, trust me. Uh, there's always a few blemishes, flaws, something here and there um, that is always in there. I mean, anybody that paints this stuff, you all know that there's always a little dust speck, something in there. So when I got done with this thing, it looked pretty good, right? Turned out pretty nice, pretty nice. And I knew that as I'm painting it, there's a few specks in it. And I thought, mm, a few little spots of dust. But when I got to the trunk, I give it a final spray. I let it tack for a little bit. And then I give it a, a final wet spray. And I don't know if it was between that tack or that last spray. I noticed there's like a whole bunch of spots here in the back, like right here and here. And I thought, whoa, what is that from? And I just, I, you know, I can get by with a few spots of dust. Doesn't bother me. Um, you know, because yes, there's a paint booth, but it's an uncontrolled air coming into the paint booth. You know, it has a fan sucking out, but it's got to suck it from somewhere. So it's getting dust from wherever. Um, so I usually try to keep everything off in here and just nice and steady and smooth and while I'm painting so that way I don't disturb anything or roll up any dust or anything. Uh, but I don't know what happened to this. So it's, I mean, it's not, I mean, you'd probably never even tell there's a few little spots there, but I mean, it's very, very subtle. So I started wet sanding this a little bit. I did the roof. There was one spot right here and there's a spot here on the door and there's oddly a spot on this door right there. Other than that, it's pretty clean. And I thought, you know, I get by with one or two spots, but man, it's just like, like five or six of them just they look like some kind of star map, you know, just, they're everywhere. I thought, oh, so we're going to polish this. We are going to sand it down. We're going to polish it. And I stopped at Hobby Lobby a while back and I picked up the sanding pads. These little polishing pads, they're little foam pads, and they work pretty good. So they start you out at 3200. Uh, where's that? Uh, and you can see I've used this guy quite a bit. Like I said, they're just these little soft foam pads. And they work really nice. And you got, you know, 8,000. And I think there's five or six of them in the kit. And there's a 6,000 here. And when you're all said and done, when you get to the final product, you have a 12,000. I mean, 12,000? This thing's like, you might as well just take a piece of paper and rub on it. Because that's about what it is. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, I don't usually do this. So... I'm sure there's better ways out there. Uh, you know, years ago, I used to do a lot of automotive painting. Um, not professionally, I just did a lot of it on the side. Uh, I was actually pretty good at it, and I think that's why I enjoy doing these so much, because it's it's very similar. And I'm going to use an automotive polish. I know Tamiya makes a really nice polish. It's a very fine cut. Uh, but I do have some... I don't know where it's at. I have some here somewhere. It's... Uh... It's the Turbo Cut um, Magic with somebody. And um, yeah, I guess I'm here somewhere. Oh, it's down there. It's Wizard. It's Wizard uh, Turbo Cut. So it's a very, very light polish. I mean, it's probably finer than toothpaste. Um, but I guess, you know, some toothpaste are pretty gritty, right? So we are going to do some polishing on this. And I'm not going to clear coat this model. I think it, I think it turned out pretty nice to where we don't need to. Um, the only thing I'm got to be careful of is the decals, um, but I think they should stick okay to it. I like to usually clear coat over my decals, but I think this one here, we'll see how they turn out uh, and go from there. But we're going to get this started and make her shiny. Oh, it's so shiny. So yeah. So let's get started. All right, guys, so like I said, we're going to give the whole thing a once over as I drop it and 
get it all nasty. Um, the biggest thing is you got to really watch these high points because if you're pressing down, sand, 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 well, you're obviously pressing down on top of here too. So you're going to take that color right off there. Next thing you know, you're going to be right down to nothing. So, um, and I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see if I can get her in the old camera. If you look just right. Oh, yeah, there you go. See those spots right there? There's a little bit on the back here in a quarter. So there was one on the roof here. I polished that out. Um, eight thousandths is the, the most I did on this. So my biggest thing, this side here is pretty clean. It's just this spot here. But obviously, if I'm going to do this much of it, I'm going to have to do the whole car because you will notice the difference. Um, and obviously, before you start, uh, this is the MCW enamel, and this stuff's hard as a rock, so it's, it may make it harder to sand being it has hardener in it. Uh, like say, I know in automotive, you didn't want to wait too long to wet sand it because, man, it could be really tough. So, we are just going to give this a quick rundown. And I will do the sides somewhat, but I'm not going to do it as much as concentrated as I did the top and the back because uh, these are my spots I'm really looking at. So what we want to do is start out with our lowest number um, and kind of go from there. So we got Mr. 3200. I think this guy's getting pretty wore out though because it's it's starting to show through a little bit. So maybe we'll skip that one and we'll go to the 36. And you always want to start at the, the little more coarser so it does some faster cutting. And then you want to work your way up to the higher uh, grit. Uh, sometimes it's nice to have a bigger bowl and you can just set the car right in the bowl and just keep the water continuously on it. Uh, that's almost the best way to go. I have a huge bowl here, but I have no idea where it went. After I moved everything in this room here, it's like, okay, so we're using this little um, dish that I, I found in my garage. Um, so yeah. So basically, I say you want to stay away from these high points and... You know it's it's nothing major you know just give her a little bit of give her a little bit of attention and um, just kind of work it and work it and work it you want to check your progress because I can you don't want to go too far with it because um, then you will be repainting like it or not and you want to keep a lot of water in this the more water the better because that's what helps lubricate it basically and helps that slide along without damaging because the water also washes away your your sanding so it doesn't interfere with the next back and forth you know yep this can be very time consuming so doing this is something you're gonna have to have some patience with it's not gonna just sand out within two or three seconds and hey we're done I and mean, it's not like that at all so I noticed when I was painting this um, I noticed when I was painting this, I had, I, I saw the spots in there a little bit. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to layer it on because you don't want to have these models where they're very thin because you're not going to have nothing to sand. So if you're going to wet sand, uh, be it clear, paint, whatever it is, you got to make sure you got some good coverage on it because once you get in there, you just, there's nothing going to be left of it once you're done. I just got to watch my corners there. It looks like I'm a little thin there. Like I say, if, go, if she goes too thin, she goes back to the booth. All right, let's see how that looks. Probably should get a microfiber towel. That'd probably work the best. Wipe her off good. So we are get almost all of them gone. Let me see if I can take a look at the camera here. So let's see. So you can see how they're almost gone out of there. So don't take too long to do that. Let's go a little more. So at this point, I think we're going to switch it up here. What do we got? We got 4,000. Let's run with that guy. This one actually is, I don't know if I've ever used it. So this one will probably cut better than that 36. Ah, uh, yes, I can feel the gritness to it. I can feel it. So just gotta be careful, stay away from those those high corners. Like say water is your friend with this. Like say I should have it in a bigger pail or like a, a bowl and just submerse the whole thing while I'm doing it. That's the that is the best way to do it. Because you want to keep that water on there and keep
keep it smooth. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to get this side here. Because remember, I'm going to I'm going to up the paper here a little bit. We're going to get a little bit of a finer cut on it. And the higher that sandpaper you get, the smoother it's going to look. I mean, it'll almost look polished before you polish it. And then you'll really know that, hey, I got this thing pretty good. So once you do polish it, it'll be just like glass. We're talking showroom shine here, guys. Looks pretty nice, pretty nice. Like I say, this takes patience, guys. This isn't something you're going to just eh, sit down polish that out quick. Not going to happen. I mean, this is something you got to kick back, take your time, and keep it wet. Like I say, I should just have it in a bucket. Thought up here, I think we're going to be golden. Let's see where we're at. See, this house turning a little pink, so it tells you we're, we're taking off some color. It's what you want, it's what you want. Still got a little bit of high spots there. Maybe that that's a little deeper than I thought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not that noticeable. I got one spot here, one here, and one here. There was a bunch of them, they're all gone. The spot here is gone, but this one here I really don't like. Give it a little more attention. You know, they say 4,000 grit on the sandpaper, but if you use actual wet and dry sandpaper, it seems like it's more abrasive than this stuff. But like I say, this does have hardener in it, so it is going to make it harder to cut it down. So that's the point of hardener, is to make it hard. And yes, it did that. Did a good job on it. Like I say, if there's a little bit in there, it's not going to kill it. Because you're, you're not going to see it as much once it's polished. It will show a little bump there, but you're probably going to have to look for it. But it's not like we're taking her to the fair. And if we are, we'll just park out back. Must be getting pretty smooth because we're squeaking. Alright, I'm going to do this and I will catch back up with you guys in a little bit. Please hold. Alright guys, we got it cut down. Uh, I didn't want to go too crazy with it because I can see I'm getting just a shade thin here and I, I really don't want to spray it. I could always go through and put some paint on it and then let it cure and then wet sand it back down. Um, so what I did is started with, like I said, the 3200 actually went into the 36 um, and went from there. I didn't get too crazy on the sides here. There's a lot of body line here and man, I didn't want to go through it. So when you're doing these, like I say, you got to be really careful not to cut that body line too much. But my dust spots are pretty much gone. There's just a little tiny show of them. I'm talking a little tiny bit. But other than that, so I did hit it with the 1200. I didn't go crazy with it. But just see how to just, just wipe in the towel with a little bit of water. See how that shine starts coming already. So now we're going to try our polish on it and we'll see how that turns out. But well, before you do that, you want to really make sure this is cleaned off pretty good. So we're getting this dried off. There's a few spots here I don't like, but man, I can't really sand it because it's that's right in that body line. I mean, I could probably finesse it a little bit. And I could probably go on a little further on this, but, you know, it's not going to be a showpiece by any means. Just my showpiece. I think I need another piece of paper towel. So it is polished down, or sanded down I should say, and we're going to put some compound on it. Now this compound might be a little heavy for this, as meaning heavy, um, it might be a little much for it. So we're going to just do a little bit. Uh, they do make one more polish um, that's finer than this, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called, this is actually called uh, Finish Cut. I think they call it, got one that's called Turbo Cut. And I think that one's just a little bit finer. So, but we're going to give this a little try. Just see how it does. If it's a little too aggressive, then we'll we'll stop and try something different. So I got me a microfiber towel here. And just don't want a lot on there, just a little bit. Get just a little bit here. Ooh, it scared me, it scared me. We'll put just a couple, just a little drop on it. Well, it's kind of a big drop. No big deal. That's why we are going to level it up a little bit here. So basically at this point, it's just like waxing a car. Haha, <laughs> yeah, a model car. Same thing. 
So as we polish, 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 that's going to get shinier and shinier. And sometimes you got to go over this a few more times and a few more applications. So you can see it's starting to polish out pretty nice. Um, like I say, I may need to get a different polish. This might not be what we're really after here, but I think it's going to work okay. Yeah, like I say, this is something that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, I know they got there's little Dremel tools out there that got the little wheel on it, buffing wheel. That would actually be ideal. Um, I actually have a Dremel, but I just never use it. And that would probably be the ideal thing to use for this. The more you polish this, 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 this would luster right out really nice. Yeah, so see, that's that's looking pretty good there. You get that nice, smooth crystal shine. So once you threw a, say, like a coat of wax on that in the end, that'd look pretty good. So let me go through and polish the rest of this, and uh, I'll show you what we got when we're done here. Please hold. So I did a little experimenting on what I have here at the house. So I started with the Wizard um, Final Cut. This is a medium cut. I mean, it's kind of after you do a wet sand on an overall paint job. Works pretty good. Um, but this is um, kind of like a, a beginning cut to a finished cut. So they have one more. Um, see right here, they say it's ideal to follow up with a turbo cut because it's a little smoother polish. So I think this is maybe just a little too too much for this. Um, so I forgot I had some of this. So when you're restoring headlights, this is a brand new bottle. And this stuff here actually works really well. Um, this works really good. Like I say, I know there's other products out there that works probably a lot better, but this is just all I have here at the house um, without going out and getting anything. So I redid the roof here a little bit. So we'll give it just a couple more drops. And you definitely want to keep a lot of clean towels handy. So I just went out and grabbed a few more. I got a big old bag of these out in the truck. Go to Sam's Club, get a pack of 36 for like 14 bucks. That's pretty cheap. And like I say, just rub your rub rub, just like you're waxing a, waxing a car. So this here actually works very, very well. I'm actually pretty impressed with this. And I could have went a little further with the wet sanding. Um, like I say, the more and more you sand it, the smoother it's going to be. So see, you can see the, the towel's got a little bit of pink on it. So that tells me we're still cutting a little bit. But you can see how nice and shiny that roof is. I mean, that thing's like, it's like a mirror. I can see my hand in that thing like it's nothing. So. So yeah, that turned out, that's like really nice. And it's. I mean, it's smooth as glass. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But yeah, that's that's pretty nice. So I got to do the side jet. I started a little bit on it, but you can see, you can see that trunk's got just a little bit of spots in it yet, but once I polish that down, you're, you're probably not going to see it as much. I took out the spot in the roof, though, so that looks nice. So we'll continue a little bit more here. Um, the other thing too you got to watch when you're using some of these polishes is it will take off paint like on your high spots so you got to really watch you know you don't want to sit there and get too carried away with it and buff 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 until it's done to nothing because it will it will take it further than you want to go so like that center spot on this side I'm, st I'm still trying to steer clear of it I know I've hit it a few times and Yeah, I did get a little too far, uh, a little too far on that, but it's not something that's like gonna stick right out and be noticeable. So we're just gonna finish this up and see how it turns out. So let me finish the rest of this, and uh, we'll give you a shot when we're done. Hold on. Okay, guys. So just a quick finishing up here. So I think this mother's actually works pretty good. Um, yes, I know there's a lot of other products out there that's probably better. Um, like I said, this is just what I had here at the house um, while we're playing with it. And like I say, I don't do this normally, so I, I don't know the best product to use on the plastic for a model. 
Um, and man, you guys could polish these things to the sky's the limit too. You know, it just depends on how how much you want to sit there and polish and mess around with it. But this looks pretty good. I mean, I'd be almost I'd almost take this to a show. It's it actually looks pretty good. Almost. A few spots I'd probably like. Yeah, I could work on it a little more. Like I said, I don't want to cut too far into it because I. I could be getting close to some of the body line where it's painting or coming through. So I'm thinking once you threw some some wax on this, this would probably really like really pop with some wax. But I got a little painting and highlighting to do, so I don't want to make it too smooth where the wax or uh, wax where paint won't stick to it. You know, I'm kind of nervous already with the polish. I might have to put some kind of cut the shine a little bit just so I can paint it. You know, I want to detail around the windows and. Uh, obviously, I want to do my marker lights and paint them, um, door handles, stuff like that. But yeah, that looks really nice. I put this on the turntable over here, and uh, we'll spin it around and around and give you the overall look here. So that'll show it a lot better. So give me some fingerprints off here. We'll go from there. So basically, what I started with was the 3200. Um, give it a little bit of touch and go till I got to that point where it looked good uh, then I went to the 400 and then the 8 or I'm sorry the 4000 and then I went to 8000 and then I went a little bit of the 12,000 I didn't get carried away with that um, but like I say it if you guys really wanted to like go all out on these things and I probably got maybe I'm probably maybe an hour and a half in this so it's I mean, I know those guys that spent like hours doing this stuff, and like I say, sky's the limit on it, guys. Just whatever you want to do. Um, like I say, I don't usually do this in my models, but this does look pretty good. So let's put this on the turntable and see what she looks like. Let's go over here. I'm holding the camera so it's going to be a little more shakier. Uh, yeah, that that looks really nice. So like I said, it's about an hour and a half worth of sanding and polishing. And like I said, I could probably went a little further with it and, you know, really went to town on this thing. But I just, my main thing was to get those dust spots out of there. And this is in fluorescent light, so they're actually, it's LED light. But yeah, I mean, that it took all those dust spots out of there. I mean, you can see just a little bit of them, but not... And I could, like I said, I could have polished a little bit more. But I'm telling you, I use this stuff here. And that, for what I have here at the house, this actually worked the best. And this is what you'd use for restoring your headlights. This comes in the kit for the headlight res restorer kit, you know. And uh, it's very, very fine. It's very fine. I mean, you can hardly feel the grit in it. It was enough to where I could see some of the pink on the towel as I was... Um, cutting it. I don't know. That turned out pretty nice. I like it. Looks better than it did. And it's it's got a lot more shine to it. The, you know, the shine is almost um, you know, like automotive paint. A lot of automotive paint has the um, like the golf ball, the dimple look. And they do a lot of that because it reflects light. So, wet sanding this down, you lose some of that. But you gain that deep depth like ultra shine you know just that wow look to it you know so there you have it guys that's uh my take on the polishing i mean it turned out pretty nice let's see if i can try to put our bottle up against here you can see the reflection on it pretty good it's probably not gonna stay I mean, you can see that bottle in there pretty nice so i mean it's like a mirror but I'm sure out in the sunlight that would look pretty good. Like I say, I could throw a coat of wax in a shed and I think it'd look really, really good. But um, I got a lot of painting to do on it yet. Uh, stuff like that. So I did burn it down a little too far right here. Um, I could put a little bit of just a little paint on there just to touch that up. But certain angles like right here, you can't hardly see it. So it's that's just one of those things you got to be careful. Um, stuff like that. But... So yeah, so that is just a quick rundown on uh, polishing these things, sanding down and polishing. 
like I say, it's not a big deal to do it. Um, I just, guys, I just don't normally do it. I just, meh. You know, it does look nice. I do give it that. And, you know, maybe I'll start doing it. I don't know. I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, like I say, this is just, a, just my take on it. And just these are the things I just had here at my house. I didn't go out specifically shopping to pick up anything special for this. Um, I just use, obviously, automotive, um, you know, polishes and stuff like that. And I know Meguiar's makes a really nice polish for this uh, that works really well on this. And those sanding pads work okay, but, you know, I'd almost rather just get some 15,000 wet and dry, like, automotive, like the black sandpaper. I think that actually cuts nicer. I just feel like I spent more time, you know, with those pads. But the nice thing about it, they're, you know, they're not as aggressive. So, you know, they're probably a little more safer to use. Because, like I say, you don't want to burn through it too quick. But, yeah. So, I like it. I like it. Okay, guys. Once again, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, we will get started on this thing and get it going. So, we will catch you guys the next time around. You guys have a good one. Thanks for watching.